Welcome. And today's stream, we're going to be looking at gzipping audio. So one of the things that, that I kind of been trying to look at is take you through this, this journey, kind of trying to introduce these concepts little by little so that you kind of build up an appreciation of what's, what's going on with the Go programming language. But, but I don't want to kind of introduce a lot of frameworks immediately because actually I think Go's got some pretty decent basics. Now, we've kind of covered a few things in the previous videos, and I'll, I'll put a link up uh, there of those, but we, we've kind of been on this journey looking at RESTful APIs, and, and I think when Ellie done the RESTful APIs, well, I know when Ellie done with the RESTful APIs, because in the next video, we're going to start looking at gRPC. So let's sort of dig into this. So gzipping, why should we care? Well, I think there's a kind of a, a reason why you want to kind of gzip information, and that is because data transfer. So if you think about it, transferring data in a zip or a compressed format is going to consume less bandwidth. It's going to get to the user quicker. So what are the drawbacks on this? Well, the drawback is that zipping and unzipping a file or a piece of information consumes CPU. It's not free, but I think the, the key thing is that actually the the CPU and the time it takes to zip content is less than, sorry, um, is less than, than the time saved. No, that's wrong. It's worth the effort. The time that's saved in terms of the data transfer is, is a lot greater than the effort it takes to, to zip a file. The interesting thing as well, what you're going to be thinking about is mobile networks. And, and I think when you're designing a system, if you're building it for consumer grade, you've got to be thinking about your audience because if somebody's using a browser on a computer, a nice fast computer with broadband internet, you know, things are very, very different from when they're using a mobile internet. And you could even have good mobile internet. So you'd be running a 4G connection or even maybe a 5G connection if you're, you're lucky enough to get that. But still the connection is 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 not as great. The pings are higher. It takes longer to kind of transfer things. The connections take longer. There's a lot more dropped packets. You know, you want to create a great experience. You've got to be thinking about mobile users. And this technique that I want to show you today, just very, very simple G-zipping stuff is is how we can how we can do that. It's just one of those steps, all built into the Go standard library. So let's take a look at this. So what we have is our source code that we were looking at last time. So the this is the same um, same code that I've been going through. And we're building building up this this kind of this file service type thing. So one of the things that we've done is we've implemented this ability to um, download images and upload images. So if we if we kind of look at um, how how this how this works, let's just quickly run run this application. So I'm just going to do go run main.go and I'm not compiling or anything like that. I'm, I'm just doing go run for the moment. And what I want to be able to do is I want to download an image. So I have an image here. It's um, ID one. So if just quick recap on how the Gorilla framework works. You have images. So this is my, my root path. And then I have an ID. An ID is going to be a number, at least one between naught and nine. So that's represented by this regex here. And then I specify the file name. My file name, again, I'm, I'm going to use a Gorilla parameter. And what I'm doing is I'm saying that the file name must be a letter, must contain uppercase or lowercase letters only, more than one, and then it must contain a dot, and it must contain an extension of three characters between A and Z, lowercase. So with with this, what I'm doing is I'm I'm kind of setting up my my file server, and we, we kind of went through this last time, but we're, we're using the basic HTTP file server to 
pick those files straight up off the disk and stream them straight out. So let's take a look at that. So if I curl it, and I'm just going to curl localhost 1991 images one holding ping, and that's going to give me this file here. I'm going to output it dash o file.png. And there we go, you see? So that downloaded, and there's our file. So that's what we've just downloaded. Really, really simple. Let's just run that again. But this time, let's take a look at that in, in verbose mode with curl. So what we have is a get request for holding PNG. We are going to accept any content types. And then the server response is a 200. It's giving us a content length, about, what's that, 80, 81K or so? And um, we are getting the content type image PNG. All of this is, is happening thanks to that HTTP file server. And then it's just sending the data. Now, the data as it's being sent is, is literally just as a, as a straight old file. It's streamed straight off the disk here and it's sent straight to my browser there in a completely uncompressed state. Now, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to implement the capability to have this configurable as gzip. So if the client can, sub can accept zipped content, then what we should do is we should zip the file before we stream it out to the browser. So let's see how we do that. We're going to do that by implementing a new piece of middleware. So let's just add our middleware over here in the handlers. And I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to call it zip middleware.go. Okay. And the package. It's my pack, my handlers package. So I can save that. Well, maybe it wants to save eventually. Okay. So I'm going to define a strut again. And I'm going to kind of um, just, well, the usual thing that I would do with the handle. I'm just going to kind of do that little basic setup. So type gzip handler. It's actually middleware, but it doesn't really matter. Type strut. And then I'm going to add my serve HTTP method to make it compatible to the HTTP handler's interface. So do G, gzip handler. Thank you. Let me correct that. Serve HTTP. And if you remember the signature here, it is response writer, HTTP dot response writer, and then a request, HTTP request. So that's a reference. Response writer is an interface. Whoops. Doesn't return anything. So this, this is our kind of our basic handler signature. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to serve uh, information as, um, as gzip. So how do, we, how do we do this? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to respond. So when, when a client, an HTTP client requests that it can handle in content in, in gzip, what it's going to do is it's going to send the header accept encoding. So if we quickly just open up a web browser here and do accept encoding, hopefully it's going to take us to, there we go, developer.mozilla, great resource. But accept encoding requests is an HTTP header advertises which content encoding usually a compression algorithm the client is able to understand. So when it, we don't have this accept encoding or we, we have something which we don't understand, then what we're going to do is, well, we're just going to send plain text back. So let's have a look at how we would do that. So again, we, we're in here, so we can get that header information from the response writer. So let's do, let's say, well, if... And we're going to say, um, well, let's say if r dot header 
and then IntelliSense is not working as usual. R.header.get accept encoding. And then we're going to say if it equals gzip. And then let's just do, do something simple here. And when we find that, we are just going to write, and um, we're just going to write, let's just write any old stuff, just to sort of test this working. That will do. Now, what's this complaining about? So this is all fine, right? Now, you're going to see this in a second, but there's an interesting thing about header in that header can actually take a comma separated list. So if I just try and do a direct comparison looking for gzip, then that isn't going to work. It's going to, it's going to fail potentially, or it's going to be certainly unreliable because if you look here, you can see that except encoding, we can do this sort of comma separated setup. So we need to be able to kind of specifically just, just dig into this. It's an important thing to, to kind of remember, just in case that one catches you out. We can do this um, really straightforward. We're, we're not going to do anything fancy. We're not going to split it or anything like that. We're just going to do strings dot contains, And we are just going to look for that. And we're just going to say gzip like that. OK, so this is our header. If we go over to our main function, let's just set that up as some middleware. And there we go. So on our get router, what we're going to do is we're just going to use middleware. And we are going to use our, our header. So we just need to create a new middleware. I'm just going to call it MW handlers dot gzip handler and I'm just doing this quickly and I can do use MW this of course needs to be a middleware function so remember back it's going to be using this middleware function so why do we use that middleware function quick recap for you the reason that we use a middleware function and not just a, a kind of a a straightforward approach like this is that we need that next header. So we need to refactor this. So what middleware function actually looks like is, let's say, let's call this gzip middleware. And then it takes next. If you remember back from how the, um, the signature for Gozilla, uh, sorry, Gorilla middleware, and that's going to return an HTTP dot handler. So to get an HTTP handler in there, what we can do is we can just do return. And then we can just do uh, HTTP dot uh, handler func. And that will convert a function into an HTTP handler. Right, there we go. So just a, a kind of a quick change there. And then now what we can do is we can use that middleware correctly. So again, let's let's just run run our application. So we're going to do go run main.go. I'm just going to correct that error message, line 16. And where are we here? So we're closing that bracket, we are closing, uh, ooh. there we go, closing that bracket, oh gosh, I thought I changed that 30 seconds ago, Okay, so everything is is up and running there. So let's um let's just in a new terminal, let's take a look at that again. So if we just curl that, 
you can see that that's you know, perfectly perfectly standard. It's nothing nothing unusual there. Now, if I use a different flag on curl, so I'm going to use dash dash compressed. And what dash dash compressed is going to do is it's going to tell curl that we can accept gzip compression and it's going to automatically unzip the, the content for us as well, right? So again, we we have this content. You see the accept encoding now. We're sending deflate and gzip. We have written that out and we've we've kind of uh, well, we actually just output a bunch of stuff there, right? So what we we want to do next is we want to 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 be able to kind of stream this file in a z uh, is gzipped data, and we can do that because Go has the ability to to wrap a stream in in a gzipped stream. So one of the things that that we we're going to do is so if it's if it's gzip. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're not going to write that anymore. We are going to create a gzipped response. If we can't accept a gzipped format, then we're, we're just going to call next. Okay. So we're just going to call next. Uh, sorry, next.serve.http. Right. Now, this gzipped response. So how are we going to do a gzipped response? So the thing is that what we have here is a response writer. And a response writer is, a, is an interface. It has certain methods on it. So you can see there we have header. Let me open this in the docs. It'll be a little bit easier to, a little bit easier to see. Response writer. Header. It has write header as a method. And it has a write method. So basically, anything we do, we can, as long as we, we're kind of implementing this response writer interface, we can create our own response writers. Now, to convert the response writer I'm getting here, this HTTP response writer, well, what I can do is I can just wrap it. So let's let's take a look at, at what that's going to, to look like. So I'm going to create my own response, right? I'm going to create a gzip response, right? So I'm going to call it a wrapped response response writer. And that's going to be a struct. And what we're going to have on there is we're going to have a HTTP dot response writer. So we're going to just have the original response writer, and we are going to have a gzipped writer. So the gzipped writer is in the compress gzip package of Go. And again, it's one of the standard library features. So if we look at that, compress gzip, there we go. You can see that actually you just have a reader and a writer. So it, it's just implementing the standard Go reader writer interfaces. Now, the, the kind of the nice thing about this is wherever you have a reader or a writer, you can use this gzipped, um, gzipped reader writer and it will automatically decode or encode the, the contents of the stream or the, sorry, the, the, the reader or the writer into a zipped format. So we're going to put a gzip writer on there. So let's create that sort of idiomatic approach and let's create a new response writer. So we're going to do func new whoops, wrapped response writer. And the parameter that it's going to take there is going to be an HTTP dot response writer, the, the kind of the standard one that we get in the header. 
and it's gonna return a wrapped response writer. So in here, we can construct that. So we're gonna create wrapped response writer. Whoops, not like that, we're not. IntelliSense getting ahead of itself. A wrapped response writer, let's set our original response writer, but let's create a new gzipped writer. So let's do gw, so it's gzip dot new writer. So writer takes an IO writer. Well, what also implements an IO writer? HTTP response writer, which is really, really nice. So now what we have is this response writer and we also have the gzipped response writer. Now the, the, the kind of the nice thing about this is, well, we can, we can start implementing the interface of HTTP response writer because it's, it's complaining here and it's saying, well, you can't do this because, well, we don't, we don't have all of those things. But we can, we can implement those. So what are the methods that we, we want to implement? Well, we want to implement the header method. So we're going to implement um, func, do wrapped response writer, header, which is the interface method for response writer, and that returns an HTTP dot header. So what we, what we are going to do with this HTTP header is we're basically just gonna return the um, the original header. So we're we're not kind of doing doing anything um, anything strange there. We're we're literally just going to return the the original. So we're we're just wrapping that that function. We also need to implement the the write method. So again, func rw wrapped response writer, write. And then the signature for that is it, you're going to write a byte of information. Oh, sorry, a slice of bytes. You're going to return the length of the, the data that you've written and an error if everything went wrong. Thank you for that, IntelliSense. Right. What are we going to do when we do our write? Are we going to just do rwr dot rw dot write no what we're actually going to do is we're going to use the gzipped writer and we're going to use rw sorry wr dot gw dot write because if you remember the gzipped writer wraps the response writer so when we call gw write any data that we're writing out is now going to be gzipped. And that's kind of like a really single line, nice, nice, quite little elegant sort of solution. We need um, just a, another sort of another method here um, for the satisfy this interface, right header. Wrapped response writer, right header. And right header is um, going to be your HTTP status code. And that is an integer. And again, we're just going to do um, wr.rw.writeheader. And we're just proxying that straight down. Lastly, let's just put a, a flush function on there. And um, the, the flush method is just going to do things like um, write anything, so flush anything which hasn't actually been sent out on the underlying strings streams there. So func wr wrapped response writer flush and what we're just going to do is we're going to do wr dot gw dot flush. I'm going to flush that um, gzip writer and I'm also going to flush the whoops rw the the original. Um, Oops. Oh, sorry. I'm going to close the um, close the stream. Right. So this is now going to make sure that any any lingering data is going to get sent.
So back up here, so we've created that wrapped response, right? So now when our string contains gzip, what we can do is we can create an instance of our wrapped response writer. So let's just call it, uh, well, I'm calling it anything here. New response writer, I'm gonna pass it the, the reference of the, the, the response writer that I'm getting in here. And um, what, uh, what I, what I kind of wanna, wanna do with that is then just use it in the normal way. So when I call next, oops, next dot serve HTTP, what I'm actually going to pass is our wrapped response writer and our request, rather than sending through the um, the the original one. So now any content that any function upstream of this middleware. Well, it's going to automatically, when it writes its data, it's going to be writing it to that gzipped writer rather than the kind of the standard plain text writer. And I'm just going to put a defer on there, and I'm just going to say uh, wrw.flush. So I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm flushing that stream before I exit. And that's it. So that's a, that's a I mean, it's a really simple example, but let's, um, let's just see that working. Hopefully, maybe. You just never know this show. Uh, what do we got? We've got um, pointed to an interface. That makes absolute sense. Zip middleware 36. I know exactly what's going on here because response writer is not a reference. Response writer is an interface. So we don't want a reference to an interface. Oh, there we go. So then, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so there's a great message there on chat saying that we can double this up to um, handle deflate too. This is this is absolutely true. Um, I'm just showing a very sort of simple example of how to use gzip, but you can handle um, any of the kind of the, the common compression methods um, in there. So the, the kind of delate, uh, deflate, bzr if you're going to use that, um, and and all of those wonderful things. Right, where are we? back over here. So now let's curl that data and we're going to output it in compressed there to output PNG. So now what you can see is that I'm kind of getting this, this content there. It's going to be gzipped. If you, if you kind of look at the, the size of the data there, we've, we've got 3,923 uh, 3, bytes of data, which we've, which we've written. This um, and if we kind of just get rid of compress there, you can see there. There's a massive difference. So the we've we've kind of almost took down the file size by well, nearly um, nearly a third. We've reduced that um, that file size to just by implementing the, the, the gzip on on that data. So that's a, a kind of a, I think, a, a really, really nice and, um, and simple, simple technique. But um, it's, a, it's a really nice way to kind of just simply zip the, the content. Oh, sorry, yeah, setting the response header to gzipped. I thought I was setting that. Uh, did I not do that? Did not my absolute bad to tell the uh, dot set content? Um, oh gosh, my brain content encoding. There we go. We're getting that um, that data out now, so we can see the content encoding gzip. We can see there that the content type, the file server is still correctly reporting that it is it is an image, and and you can see there that the image is is displaying correctly. So thank you so much for chat for pointing out that little omission 
I made there. But this is a dramatic reduction, right? So we, we, we've, re we've implemented something very, very simple, just using simple middleware, and we've reduced the data size by a third. Now, that, that can make a, a sort of a, a, a pretty substantial difference when we're dealing with poor connections, mobile connections. The overhead on the server, yeah, for sure. We're going to be using a little bit of CPU because we're zipping content, but I think you'll find that the kind of the balance is worth it. Like everything, you kind of need to sort of experiment with these things and, and don't just kind of blindly take an approach. But I think in general, using gzipping for your, your outbound files is, is, a, is a really useful thing to do. Are we kind of only restricted to, to gzipping files? No, I mean, we can, we can kind of gzip anything that can be written to the, to the body. The, the kind of the, the benefits, it, it's, a, it's about whether the client can, can de de decode it. I think that's all for this episode. And I want to kind of say thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying, please uh, like and subscribe. Next episode, which we're going to do looking at in a couple of days, I'm going to be starting to look at gRPC. I think you're really going to like to look at this. So until then, thank you so much. And I will see you all next time. Let's get that outro music going.